Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I am so glad that you're here. And I've got an amazing story that I want to share with you, a story that has inspired me at a time when I was really struggling. When the pandemic hit earlier this year, I'll be honest, I wasn't really ready. Was any of us really ready? Did we really anticipate what the rest of 2020 would actually look like? All the canceled events, being quarantined, being stuck in the same place, not being able to go about our regular lives. Sickness and death everywhere, uncertainty, unknowns. No one was really ready. We weren't ready. You know what? The previous year, 2019, has been one of the best years of my life ever. It was so much fun for me. 2019 was full of fun and success, and I fulfilled a lot of dreams last year, a lot. 2020 seemed to start out this way too. I was thinking, wow, this is going to be my best year ever. This is the year I turned 40. This uh, business is on fire. Everything's going well. I mean, started out great. We sold out two workshop events. We were planning more workshop events. I had a 10-day tropical vacation of a lifetime with my family in a beautiful Puerto Rico. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Woohoo! Like, I actually almost went to that. I don't have regrets about that, but I almost went to that and just, you know, I wanted to celebrate with family and friends at home, so that was better, but the Chiefs won the Super Bowl nonetheless, so that was a very exciting thing. Business and sales were rocking. We, bro- we broke ground and a huge remodel project this year, actually the very beginning of March. We've redone our kitchen and our living area, and we were just, 2020 was just going to be better than the last year. I mean, this was our plan. This was my plan. I had all these ideas. I was just ready for 2020 to be even better than 2019. And then the pandemic hit our country really, really hard and really fast. It was a heavy blow for everyone, everyone. Everybody went through something immediately. We had all these unknowns and fears and anxiety. Instantly, millions of people were unemployed. Thousands of events were canceled. Millions of dollars were lost in revenue and business and travel. And, you know, thousands of people were sick and dying. This was a dark time. And whether or not we all chose to admit it, we all had our own internal and external circumstances and struggles that really just flipped life upside down. Now, some of you might have struggled financially. Maybe it was with loneliness, of quarantine, of just cabin fever. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe someone that you love got sick and maybe even passed away. During quarantine, everything was scary. The world as we knew it changed maybe forever. Fear and doubt and worry been hovering over all of us for quite a long time. And there was something that hit me that was really new, new to me. I know some of you have suffered from depression and anxiety and things like that your entire lives. And I am here to tell you and give you a big fat giant hug because I'll be honest, I haven't really struggled much with depression in my life. I've been always been able to kind of look at the bright side of things and, um, you know, be a positive reinforcement for other people that were going through that. Always looking at a different perspective and giving a sense of positivity when there didn't seem to be any. Yeah, sure, I have worries and fears and failures and bad days, but mostly I'm not generally plagued with depression, a longer term, day after day type of depression. But during this quarantine and during all of the things that were happening earlier on this year, Depression hit me pretty hard. Now, I know some of you are like, hey, you kept making videos and podcasts and you seem to be fine. Honestly, I just was going through some motions. I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving on. But honestly, inside, I was full of fear and doubt and worry and anxiety and depression. There were days I didn't want to get out of bed and I really didn't have to because you know, quarantine. No one's going anywhere. No one's got school. No one's got work. We can't really go to stores. Like, we're disinfecting everything as part of our days. Like, why get out of bed? What's there to live for? I really had never struggled with these thoughts before. 
And so I had to really come to a place where I could figure out what was wrong and figure out how to, to fix it. I was worried about my business. I was struggling and worried if I could handle all of the responsibilities of mommy income when Amy retired. I was concerned that I wasn't going to be enough that I wasn't going to be good enough for you guys, that I wasn't going to do it all, that I couldn't do it all very well, that I was just going to crash and fail, that I didn't have the necessary skills to figure it all out. And then I turned on the TV, which is something I never do. You guys, I don't really watch TV. Y'all know me. You, you, I've said this a little time. There's a few things I watch. I like Jimmy Fallon. I like sports. Um, but I'm not really like a major TV watcher. I barely even watch movies. It's just not my thing when I have spare time, whatever that means. Um, I don't usually spend it on, on TV. But there was a day where I saw a story that changed my perspective and all but drug me quickly out of the black hole that I was falling deeply into. Y'all know how much I love football, right? I mean, if you've listened to me for even one episode, there's usually always some sort of mention of the Chiefs. And I love um, football and I love everything about it. And I love going to games and listening to games and watching them, all kinds. Not just my Chiefs, but everyone. Uh, did I mention they won the Super Bowl this year, right? Um, just in case you forgot. <laughs> During quarantine, sports were also canceled. I mean, they're still canceled. Some of them are coming back online. We've got football stars football season. Uh, I mean, without going to games, but um, baseball, hockey, um, basketball, everything's coming back. But during quarantine, there literally was nothing to watch except like bowling reruns. <laughs> I was desperate, right? Just to buy, to watch something. There's classic games, things like that. But flipping through the channels and landing on ESPN, I came across this the story that was playing. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is it? I love sports, but I also love people. Fascinating people with inspiring stories, rags to riches, people who have overcome some seemingly impossible obstacles. I love these types of stories. I love to learn how people have become successful. What was their driving force? Who was there around them to support them? How many times did they fail before they finally had their breakthrough? These things inspire me. I love, especially about sports figures. I don't know what it is about sports figures. I just love like Undeniable is one of my favorite shows um, when they just interview like awesome sports figures, sports stars, athletes, Olympians, like all this different stuff. So while the classic games of old Super Bowls and reruns and bowling tournaments were being aired on ESPN, I saw the story and I was fascinated. I was moved to laughter and tears and smiles throughout this whole, was it like 30 minute show? It's like 30 for 30. Um, there's the interviews, they do feature stories. Anyway, Sports Center, Sports Center ran a feature story that I will never, ever forget. It's a story of a high school head football coach from California, a man who won the ESPY Award, the prestigious Jimmy V Award for Perseverance, a man who has loved football since the moment he was exposed to it. In his first season as a head coach, his team finished 8-2, and two, unfortunately, with a heartbreaking loss in the championship game. He's never played a game of football in his life. In fact, he's never even touched a football. He's never even walked on a football field. Yet he's a head coach of a high school football team. I want to introduce you to a man named Rob Mendez. He was born with a rare disease called Tetra Amelia. Less than 100 people are born with this particular disease each year. He was born without arms and legs. Just let that sink in for a second. Born without arms and legs, head football coach. Hmm. So how did he learn to play football? This story was fanta fantastic, and I encourage you all to go to ESPN.com and Google or Google Rob Mendez and watch this featured story. I mean, I can't tell the story as, as good as they can, and of course, it's his own story, but I've got to share some things because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you what I've learned and what you can learn from Coach Rob and other people like him. And so let me continue the story. So he... He learned how to play 
football by playing a Madden video game. And just, you guys got to watch the video because how he, he plays the video game, he played the video game as a child, like with his chin, with using the things. And you ask him, how did you do this? How did you learn? And he says, this is a quote from him. He says, by using my capabilities instead of my incapabilities. He used his voice. He used his brain. He used his infectious smile and his spark for life. Now let's just breathe for a second and think about that. This was me in a mindset of depression, feeling sorry for myself, being fearful, doubtful, worried, and complaining. And I see a man without arms and legs leading a high school football team to victory week after week. My mind was blown and I was extremely humbled and moved to tears. How dare I make excuses? What am I thinking? If he can do this, surely I can get myself up off the couch and get moving. He never gave up his dreams. This is something that we can learn. So I really want to talk about what I learned specifically from this really short, like 30 minute video and learning about Coach Rob and all the things he does. This is one of the things one of his colleagues said about him. His ability to study the game and then translate those strategies to the players is unmatched by any coach I know. He's never played. How could that be? Well, because he did what he thought he knew was best. He used his capabilities and didn't focus on what he couldn't do. He has a catchphrase. I hate even saying catchphrase. It is a life mantra. It's something we can all say, and I have adopted personally, thank you, Coach Rob, every day. His hashtag, his, his mantra is, who says I can't? And he says this in his huddle, right before all the guys go take the field. He says, who says I can't? Nobody. Who says I can't? So his whole life, he said, all the doubts, all the questions that everyone's ever had of, how, could th how is this possible? How can you learn football? How can you play video games? How can you even move everyday life? Let's just think about that for a minute. Everyday life for a man without arms and legs is challenging more than anything we all do in one single day. He needs 24 hour care to take care of himself, yet he can write a football play faster with his mouth than anyone else can write with their hands and fingers. We have to look at our capabilities instead of our incapabilities. And he was always challenged, he said in this documentary. It lights a fire under him to do more, to do better, to be better, to prove people wrong. Who says I can't coach football? Who says I can't lead teams to victory just because I don't have arms and legs? Who says you can't? Nobody. So what can we learn from Coach Rob? Probably everything. But there are four key things that I took away from watching this and just letting it sink in. After I watched this show, I was so affected that I just sat there for almost an hour thinking, crying, praying, wondering, dreaming. There's so many things that we can learn. There's so many things that I learned from this 30 minute, however long it was, maybe it was an hour, I don't remember. It was so, it impacted my life so much I couldn't help but share it with you guys. So one of the first things is what I've said four or five times already. One of the first things I learned that just struck me is what he said, how did, someone asked him, how did you accomplish all this in your life? I mean, how did you overcome all, what seems insurmountable? You would think you can't do anything. You can't even brush your own teeth. How on earth can you do this? Focus on what you are capable of instead of what you're incapable of. What you focus on will grow. What you shine a light on, you'll see more clearly. So Coach Rob shined a light on all of his capabilities. What he could do. He could smile at people. He could talk to people. He could use his intellect to encourage other people when you would think he's the one that might need some encouragement. He took that gift, that internal natural happiness that he had, and he put it back on someone else. Can't has always been a bad word in our house. 
If you asked my daughter, Allie, right now, if you said, hey, what's a bad word in your house? The first thing she's going to say is can't, because I taught her that can't is a bad word in our house. Her response will be, you can't say I can't. And I said, what can you say instead, Allie? She says, you, we can say, I don't know how. I'm scared. I need help. I can practice. But you can't say can't. So instead of can't, who says I can't, right? You can say, I don't know how. I'm scared. I'm scared to learn. I'm scared to fail. These are things you can say, but don't you dare say I can't. When you co proclaim that you can't, you're setting yourself up for failure instantly. You've already decided that you can't. So why bother? Why try? Why even move forward? I can't anyway. If you believe you can't, you won't. Sometimes the shortcomings we have, sometimes the limitations we have, the handicaps that we have that hinder us the most are the ones we can't see. Coach Rob has no arms and legs and he works from a wheelchair that he uses his mouth to control. But he never says he can't do that. Instead, he says, let me see what I can do. The ones that handicap us the most is our mind. Things like doubt, fear, self-criticism, low self-worth, worry, anxiety. Hello, that's where I was when I saw this story. And I was instantly, literally instantly, just snapped out of it and thinking, what was I thinking? Who says I can't? Yes, that is inspiring. Who says I can't? I'm the one telling myself I can't. No one else out there is saying, oh, you can't do that. And if they are, they're not saying it to my face. <laughs> Thank goodness. But honestly, we're talking to ourselves about these things. We're telling ourselves, I can't, I won't, I'm scared, I'm worried, I'll fail. Focus on what you are capable and do these things to the best of your ability, the absolute best of your ability. Refine the skills that you've already learned. You don't have to be the best. Is Coach Rob the best coach? Probably not. Could he be? Absolutely. But you know what? He strives every day to be his best. And that's what I want. That's why that's so inspiring. So what you can focus on is what you are capable right here and right now. Refine your skills. Learn more. Practice more. Get feedback from others. Don't be afraid to ask others, how are you doing? How do you, you know, not even comparing yourself to others, but how am I doing? Am I a better person than I was last year? Hire outside help from a coach or a mentor to help you improve your skills, whatever those skills are, to improve upon your business or yourself or whatever it is that you're doing. Did you know that almost every single athlete, I would venture to say every athlete, every Olympic gold medalist, every champion, every, every person that's been out there that has won a championship or that is just an elite athlete, even the ones you don't know about, they've got coaches, they've got mentors, they've got trainers, they've got people that they have invested in and invested in them to help them grow and learn. They didn't get there by themselves. They used their capabilities and they helped strengthen their strengths and not worry as much about their weaknesses. We never stop learning, never become complacent and saying, oh, I'm kind of just good and chilling right here. You don't have to be the best. You just have to be your best. And that takes improving your skills, learning more, practicing more, and never saying the word can't. Number two, love. This is something that, I mean, you just, you guys just got to watch this video, but in my, in my interpretation, something that coach Rob has said from the very beginning is that his philosophy for coaching is love. Love unites and changes lives starting with your own. Now before you guys hit the exit button and go, I thought this was a business podcast. Now you're talking about love and it's touchy-feely and all that. Just hang in there. Just hang in there because we all have a desire in our hearts to love. We have the capacity to love, we want others to love us, and we want to love them, and we want to have this reciprocal type love. This doesn't always have to be that touchy-feely kind of, ooh, warm and fuzzy, like new relationship kind of love, okay? So hang in there. Rob and his team, he ran his team with love. In fact, he demanded it from his players. This is a quote from Rob. 
One thing I take pride in is being a family. If you can't show love on the football field, you better get off of it. It's not about you. You need to play for you and the brother next to you. So think about that. He not only, but he not only demanded love from his players, he demonstrated that love and he loved himself. He practiced self-love. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to struggle in that area. He always accepted, he, he learned. He didn't always accept himself at the very beginning. He learned to accept and love himself for who he was. And then he poured that out on other people. He said, love is going to be his philosophy in coaching. You need to love yourself and know your worth. I mean, that's mind blowing considering the source. You would think that someone with such a severe disability in our perspective would maybe have a lot of self-pity, would maybe play a victim, would maybe feel sorry for themselves, would maybe drag around and woe is me and want everyone else to just pamper and pity, um, that kind of thing. But no, instead he accepted himself for who he is and he puts himself out there and he pours all of that onto other people. It's just amazing. It gives me goosebumps thinking about that. So I know we have some male listeners here too as well, and but a lot of women really, really struggle with self-love, body image, self-image. The struggle is real. And I don't mean loving yourself like you're walking around all proud and haughty all the time, like, oh, I'm all that, you know, type of thing. But let's get really honest here. How many of us really love ourselves? How many of us have accepted our whole selves just the way God made us and we have fully embraced and accepted that we are enough? I bet you I'm not going to get too many amens there. It's real. It's a struggle. I mean, if I asked you the question right now, what's the number one thing you love about yourself? It'd probably be a difficult response for a lot of you. It was a difficult response for me to reflect on. So I'm always looking at how I'm falling short instead of how, or how I'm measuring up or not measuring up rather than all of the qualities, the God-given talents that I have. So it's very difficult. So probably not many. In fact, we are really quick to point out all of our flaws to everyone else because we, we assume that they're all thinking about those things anyway. And perhaps we've been taught that self-love is arrogant and that we have to be full of ourselves and walking around thinking we're all great and boasting and bragging. No, that's not true self-love. The truth is the word love is rarely defined in society. There's all kinds of maybe definitions of what people think love actually is. We see love stories in movies and songs and written about all this touchy-feely, warm, fuzzy kind of love. Well, if we look at where real love comes from, then we can gain a different perspective. And I know that both Coach Rob and I have this in common. For those of you guys that are listening, you know I'm a God girl, you know I'm a Christian, and that my worldview and my perspective always comes from this angle. No apologies for that. That is just part of who I am. But hear me out for a few minutes, even if you don't, your beliefs don't align with mine, because I think we can all learn from this next principle. Defining love. And there is no wrong in this, whether you um, have a different religious belief or no religious beliefs at all. We can all probably agree that love in this type of definition is a great thing. So let's look briefly at how God defines love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. This is God's, you don't have to be religious to practice these things. Just listen for a second and hear what it has to say. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy. It doesn't brag. Love is not arrogant or proud. It does not dishonor or disrespect others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now, this is really common scripture that people use in wedding vows and, you know, things like that. I'm sure you've seen it on a plaque. You've seen it, you know, here and there. But think about those things for a minute. These are all things that we all could use a little bit more of. Patience, kindness, 
no envy, no bragging, not self-seeking, not easily angered. Now think about Coach Rob. He said love is his philosophy, and this is the definition of love. He is patient with his players. He's kind. He's not self-seeking. He doesn't keep records of wrongs. He always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Can I get a coach like this in my life? That is something that everybody should be screaming from the life side, operating out of that kind of love. But here's the real question. The one that, yeah, you can love your players like that. This is in wedding vows and everything else, but here's the real question. Do you love yourself this way? Commit to loving other people as much as you love yourself. Love yourself as much as you commit to loving other people. That is really important. Take some time to focus on one thing that you love about yourself. Write these things down and at least say, love is patient. I will be patient with myself. Love does not envy. I will not compare myself to others. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. I'm going to protect myself from toxic things. I'm going to trust. I'm going to persevere. So flip it around to how you love yourself and how you treat yourself. Is that something that you, that's really important? I think all the time we want to take this love passage and we want to push it out on, this is how we're supposed to love others. But it starts inside. How can you give that if you don't first internalize it and practice it, right? We get better at what we practice. So think about that for a minute. Take some time to focus on one thing that you can continue loving about yourself or one of these attributes that you can say, you know what, I'm going to be more patient with myself. Number three, no excuses. Coach Rob was not offered a job out of pity or sympathy. He worked for 12 years as an assistant, assistant head coach. He had been lots of assistants in different places, taking on jobs here and there, but he was offered a job because he was capable. He worked hard. He earned it. He developed his skills. He never gave up. He never used his handicap as an excuse not to become the best version of himself. He knew deep down inside he couldn't be like other people, but that was his strength. Of course he couldn't be like other people. He was made differently. And because of what we would consider weaknesses or handicaps or shortcomings, we're actually working in his favor because he has things, he has experiences, he has perspective that no one else has. And that is why it has made him a better coach, and that's going to make him a better coach in the future. He didn't give up after being rejected numerous times. I'm sure there's been times where people have made fun of or stared or rejected because they just thought, how can this be possible? They didn't have the beliefs. He knew he would have to work 10 times harder than the average person to do the same job. And instead of whining about it and making excuses about it, he did the work. So what about you? What about us? What are we making excuses about? This is my confession time. This is where I need the most work. This is exactly why I'm inspired to change because of Coach Rob. I make excuses and they hold me back. That's just honest and real. And I think if you guys are honest and real with yourselves, you can understand that too. It holds us back. I have a disease and an illness that makes it difficult to stay healthy and to shed extra weight. I've already been told by my doctors, my endocrinologists, everyone else, that it's going to just be a struggle to maintain a healthy weight due to the medicine that I have to use every single day for the rest of my life. It's like they hand packaged me an excuse to give up. So I owned that. And so I've been proclaiming that for the last several years. Oh, well, my doctors told me it was pretty much going to be not impossible, but they said a real struggle to continue to, like, you're going to have to work 10 times harder than the other people. And instead of like Coach Rob, where he just kept moving, I saw that self, my, I saw that as a handicap. I saw that as a disability. I saw that as an incapability and I focused on it and I've been focusing on it for many years. 
it gave me the excuse to quit, to give up. Oh, I'll always be like this. Nothing will ever change. This is the same pattern I've been going through over and over. I whine, I give up. I do, I do this in business too. I have believed the lie that I am not good at this and therefore I don't do it. I don't try to improve or learn because I have already decided in my mind that I'm not good at this. I get stuck believing that I will always be bad and so I give up the effort of trying. I stop trying or at least wholeheartedly or I go into it trying but knowing that I'm going to fail. I walk into it thinking I'm not going to succeed anyway and so then what's the use? Not today, not anymore. This is my public announcement. This is me not giving up, not giving up on my health anymore and starting to embrace the self-love. Wow, that's a scary thing to say out loud, honestly. Um, this is my public accountability. I'm terrified, but at the same time, I want to, what I want to do is be the best version of myself. The person... I don't want to be the person that tells me I can't. Who says I can't is no, is no longer going to be something that I tell myself. So this is my public accountability. I thank you for being there and listening. It gives me a reason to keep moving. I love accountability. I think it's super important and I feel like nobody can grow out of their comfort zone and be a better version of themselves without some sort of accountability, some sort of coach, mentor, person, trainer, whatever it is that you need. There's no shame. There's no shame in therapy. There's no shame in getting a mentor or a coach or someone older and wiser that you can have a conversation with that's going to push you to be better, to do better. Because let's be honest, we could all use a little improvement in some area of our lives, right? And that there's some area of our lives where we're killing it. And then there's some other pieces where we're like, eh, I'll worry about that a different time. Or, you know, who cares about my health if I'm a really successful business owner and coach? Hello, me. <laughs> so it's time to get accountable. It's time to be the best version of ourselves. Have you ever found yourself waiting, like, if I just have X, Y, Z, fill in the blank, I'll be happier, I'll be better, things will be more calm. If I just had more money, if I had extra time, if I just hired a nanny, if I lost 20 pounds, whatever that is, you're waiting to arrive at a happy place when you do something. But really, if, you, if someone waved a magic wand and fixed your problem right now, you would never learn the necessary skills to uphold and maintain whatever it is that you're going through. This is, a, this is an example I've heard from like lottery winners, right? Like there's so many people that play the lottery, which I'm not judging anybody for the lottery. I like scratch off tickets and Powerball every now and then. I mean, it's fun to hold that little ticket in your hand and dream about like billions of dollars, right? Like woohoo, quit your job and go to Hawaii. Um, but the reality is that that whole longing is an instantaneous solve to a problem. Why? Because deep down we know it's difficult. If you've got $50,000 in debt and somebody pours $50,000 into your bank account right now, but then you don't learn how to manage your money properly after that, you're just going to get right back into debt. If someone waved a magic wand and erased 50 pounds from your body right now, you wouldn't know what to do for very long to maintain that. Because the healing has to come from inside. You have to learn how to eat properly. You have to learn how to exercise properly. If somebody handed you a million dollar business right now today, yet you haven't taken all the steps to build that business yourself, the chances of you mismanaging it and losing it all is very, very high. We don't get what we don't earn. And there's a reason that we have to walk through all of the steps to get there. Because the learning and the reward doesn't come at the arrival. It comes with the journey. It comes in the process. It comes in the small steps that we take every day to make improvements. It's not an overnight thing. The overnight people, they end up losing it all. 
or if they've lost all the weight, they gain it back because it's this, they don't learn how to deal with the reasons they might be overweight to begin with. They don't learn to deal with the psychology and the habits that need to form in order to maintain a healthier person. Same thing with mental health. Same thing with business. Cannot happen overnight. All right, the fourth thing that we need to learn, and this is where Coach Rob and I are just like right together with this. Dreaming big, right? Dreaming big. He never stopped believing that he could be a head coach. For 12 years, he was an assistant. And was that a high honor? Of course. Of course it was. Did he devalue that experience? Absolutely not. But it means no, it doesn't matter what you're doing when you're reaching for something bigger. It's okay to have bigger dreams. After many rejections and years of being assistant, he finally got a head coach job. His first season, winning season, eight to two. Eight victories, two losses. He's not done dreaming. His big dream is to be an NFL head coach. He never doubts his ability, but he still works hard to improve his skills. Why? Because we all know as dreamers that what got us here won't get us there. We've got to continually improve. You know, I'm fascinated by a lot of these athletes and I watch their stories and I read their bios and I read their transformations. And, you know, recently I know you guys know Tiger Woods, right? You know, kind of one of the greatest golfers of all time. Um, it last few years ago, he had a really, really rough life. He created that hole for himself, but he got into drugs and he had an affair and he had all this secret life going on behind the scenes, which then of course affected his golf game and him as a person. But it's one of the best comeback stories of all time because he didn't stop there. He didn't stay there in that drug use and that terrible relationship and, and being a dishonest person and all those things. He saw it for what it was and he decided to draw a line in the sand and say, no more. I am going to be the best version of myself. And he worked on his golf game. He worked on his swing. He worked on his physical pain that he issued. He found a new relationship. He got off the drugs. And now he's back to doing a sport that he loves. Some will say he's better. Some will say he's worse. I'll leave that up to you. The reality is he kept dreaming bigger. He didn't give up because he had failures. He said, no, I'm going to improve my skills, I'm going to improve myself, and I am going to get back on that horse and start going again. This is the sign of a true tra champion. Whether you're a high school football coach or a little league co football coach or Tiger Woods or Rob Mendez, it does not matter. The sign of a true champion is trusting your abilities, even in your own greatness, but never growing comfortable with where you are. Always seek to improve as a person, as a business owner, as an athlete, as a mom, as a wife. If your relationships aren't the way that they, you want them to be, seek to improve them. Don't wait around for the other person to do it. No one's going to get you what you want except you. Coach Rob, I cannot wait to see you as a head coach in the NFL. Perhaps when Andy Reid retires, you can take over the Chiefs. That would be amazing. <laughs> but what can we learn to dream bigger and then take the smaller steps to improve those skills and move forward towards what you want? Here's my final words of encouragement for you guys. Going from a place of depression, maybe you're there right now. Maybe you've had ins and outs or bouts of this kind of stuff. Your business is failing. You can't get through the doors of Amazon. You're beating your head against the wall from customer service. Whatever it is that you're facing, everyone has a story. Your story has the power to change lives. And guess what? Since you're still here, since you're still listening, your story's not over yet. This is just another chapter, another page, another day. Until you close your eyes in death, your story continues. What do you want the next chapter to look like? It doesn't have to look like the last chapter. I encourage you to stay inspired. Look for and seek out stories like this that inspire you. Let them change you. Let the lessons sink deep into your heart. And remember, remember them. 
write a sticky note for yourself. Hello, me and my sticky notes. I have sticky notes all over my desk, inspirational quotes, notes of things I need to take care of, reminders, but mostly it's reading, reading quotes from people that just sink deep down in and let them change you. Remember these things and take action in your life based on what you've been inspired by. I mean, if he can do it with no arms and legs, I as a fully capable mobile adult can do anything too. Whatever's got you stuck, whatever's gotten you down, whatever's gotten you stressed out, thinking you can't do something, think of Coach Rob. Put on some love, put on some love for yourself and for others and scream at the top of your lungs, who says I can't? And then go and do it. Blessings to you, my friends. Stay encouraged, stay inspired. The world needs what you have. Go give it to them.